Rasta have always been brutalized and discriminated against. I remember I was just a child when, you know, they raided Pinnacle, I think it's back in 58 or 57. And as a child, it was very devastating for me to see my dad being taken in a van and a lot of the people up there were taken off. They're um, taken off the land that they build homes. And after all, they had their farms and they had their money. <laughs> so all they had was just the, the clothes on their back. I mean, what sort of atrocity is that? He was a good man to the people. He come back, he travel the world and come back to Jamaica to educate the people and show the people and so they can rely on themselves. But everybody used to rely on other countries. You see what I mean? He come and say self-reliance. Eat what you grow and grow what you eat. He, I understand, is the man that started the Rasta movement. He didn't understand why black people was so deeply depressed. I understand, and then the same the same person who was who was um who was oppressing us, it was the same people who was pushing the Christian religion. The Bible said, look towards the east for the coming of a black king. And when he looked towards the east, he said, I listen to the The Rasta people in those days were very united. You know, so even if a Rasta man has a home like this, maybe all 20 people would be in here, you understand? And one big patch is in the back there. Or maybe five Rasta men may get another house and another 20. So it happens that way that government still show no sign of compensation to the pit, to the Howellites, the people who had the most disgusting life in Jamaica, the pinnacle. And now it comes down to a lot of brethren. You know, before the Rasta movement grew to this point it is now. When it started, people actually did not lock their hair. They did not comb, but they are still under this uh, Nazarenean uh, 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 vow. You know, you and if you read the Bible, it tells you Samson and all these Solomon and all these people. They took a vow not to cut their hair or their beard. And the so the Jews right now in the U.S. they have the same, and a lot of people. But because of the ignorance in Jamaica, they do not accept people with dreadlocks. They didn't accept us when we were in dreadlocks anyway. So what's the difference, even if you lock? because of your own religious belief. And you can't judge people for their religious belief. When my father did street meeting, preaching about Rastafari, and he was always molested, brutalized, because Rasta have always been brutalized and discriminated against way, way back, because we did not conform <laughs> to segregation and we did not conform to discrimination and we did not conform to their ideology because economically we were the one that was giving them the economic strength and especially when Il Selassie crowned Lords of Lords, King of King conquering line of the tribe of Judah in Ethiopia, elector of the world, making him the most supreme being on the planet. And when kings and other people came and bowed to his feet, it gave us black people a sense of superiority. So how we had to show black people, look, you are black superiority here in Jamaica. And the, the, the English people could not deal with that because how can black people all of a sudden feel that they're superior? And they're the one that is controlling the society. What greater contribution can a man give 
to anything but his life. Wouldn't you say? My father gave his life, his sweat, his blood, his tears to the contribution of his race. I actually, I'm not worthy to even wear my father's shoe, but I do honor and respect him for the work he did. And because I respect him so much and admire what some of the things that he has done, even right now, we still have a lot of problem as black people living, you know, in different part of the world. And so the way I try to carry on his legacy is just to do my part.